Hello, hello, hola, hola. Welcome back to a walk around Puerto Rico. Um, I'm Daniela and this is Hana. And today we'll be talking about some language and poetry in the island. So first things first, um, in class we do intros, pronouns, um, and think about a couple of different questions. So you can think about what's your favorite word, what does it mean and why. Um, discuss maybe with some of your peers or parents, um, why is language so important? If you could learn a new language, which one would it be? And do you think that a country's language reflects its culture? So we have a fun little meme on the side that maybe <laughs> you can associate it to one of those questions. We'll see. So uh, do you want to enter some language? Sure. Um, so modern Puerto Rican language has been molded by the merging cultures that inhabit the island. So if you remember from the first video, um, there's the three main kind of cultures that we're mixing in uh, Puerto Rico to create uh, how we know it today, which was uh, the Taino, the Spaniards, and um, the enslaved African people, um, mostly with like Yoruba influences. So uh, Spanish colonialism in the island installed Spanish as the national language. And that was like, that became the institutional language, but it was heavily influenced by the fusion of the Taino and African languages as well. So what's very cool about uh, Puerto Rican language uh, is that even if you're speaking one, there's going to be words and influences from the yeah. others. And just the way that people construct how they speak. It's Definitely. really wonderful. <laughs> yeah. um, so the Taino influences. The Taino were the uh, uh, indigenous people of uh, the island. Um, they, this picture here is one of their like pictograph alphabets that they used. Um, but a lot of words that we use today for to describe nature is from Taino. So, for example, for hurricane, it was huracan, um, and other like animal species, especially the endemic species like iguana, uh, comes from the word iguana. Um, and then there's lots of like municipalities, like towns um, that have Taino names. So Mayaguez, uh, Umacao, and, uh, and Umacao are, are two such municipalities. Mm -hmm. So they're still used today. You'll still see the names on the map, in the dictionary. All over the world, we use the word hurricane. Yeah. Uh, and it's from the Taino. Yeah, um, it comes from the spirituality of them. Huracan was actually the god of bad weather. So... Yeah, exactly. It's so cool to see that influence and from all the way back in time, we're here today, still in our words, speaking towards that uh, uh, deity. Um, and so in fact, the original name of the island is Boracan. Uh, and to this day, Puerto Ricans call, call themselves Boricua. Um, and yeah, so instead of uh, referring to it as Puerto Rico or themselves as Puerto Ricans using yeah. the Taino name. Yeah, there's um, a little chant that Puerto Ricans say when they're feeling loud and proud and they say, yo soy Boricua, pa que tu lo sepa. And they're like, I'm Boricua, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. So a little bit about the Yoruba slash African influences. Um, these uh, influences are heavy on the cuisine part of the island. So food like mofongo is very much uh, an African word. Instr they're also used in instruments and dancing, anything related to music, especially when it comes to la bomba and la plena, which are um, the music genres that um, were originated in the island with these African influences. 
um, they're all derived from the African language um, Yoruba. So the African language also had a big influence on Puerto Rican Spanish phonology. So as one does around the world where they speak the same language, but um, in different countries, there's always sort of dialect or a way to pronounce things that are differently. So in Puerto Rico, these pronunciations come from the phonetic um, differences that the Yoruba brought. So these are characterized by the deletion of the final consonant N, the aspiration of the final consonant S, and the alternation between L and R consonants in the middle of a word. So again, this can be observed in like the characteristics of language speaking in Puerto Ricans. So for example, I'll translate a little. Um, so los dulces is a phrase that means the candy. Very simple phrase. In Puerto Rico, you'll pronounce it los dulce, como que los dulce. And um, that's uh, an example of the aspiration of an S at the end of the, um, as, as a final consonant. So where other countries might be very meticulous in saying those S, S's at the end, Puerto Ricans just aspire them. Lo <laughs> dulce. Um, another thing that you might hear from Puerto Ricans is Puerto Rico. So Puerto Rico, can you hear Puerto Rico? <laughs> we exchange those L and, L and R's in the middle of words a lot. <laughs> so those are the Puerto Rico. <laughs> That's a funny little one. So Hannah, some... Yeah, and so the English in uh, Puerto Rico has a similar story to just how Spanish came into the island. Um, but this time it was from the US colonization. Um, or so the, with that colonization came the integration of the English language. And originally the US decreed that the, in, the official language of Puerto Rico would be English. But it didn't take because everyone was already working in Spanish and the, the unique form of Spanish of Puerto Rico. Um, so in 1912, the uh, Puerto Rican Teachers Association resisted against the forceful use of English in schools because they're like, we don't even know English well enough to be teaching it to our students. And it doesn't make sense for us. Our, our documents, our government, it's all running in Spanish. So why should, we shouldn't have to change. Mm -hmm. um, and so then how that sorted out was that Puerto Ricans started learning English as a second language in schools instead of being forced to that to be their primary language that they learn in and speak in. Um, and Spanish was reestablished as the official language. So what happened was kind of a hybrid of both languages, uh, which is interesting, just adding to the mixture that was already happening, English comes in with its own influences. Uh, and it is curious too, because further English is one of the, it's like the vacu a vacuum language. I remember you for referring it as like, it picks up uh, words and sayings from different languages. So, you know, some French, Italian, or German, all that stuff came in with the English too, uh, which I think it's, very interesting. Um, but not to nowadays people they can switch between like codes of speaking and the languages rather easily. Like it's just ha habit now. Um, yeah. Have adopted like the permanent use of certain English words into the vocabulary. So for example, they use the English word for parking and it was even like right, it was in the it's even in, it's accepted in the dictionary. So instead of saying estacionamiento, which was like the original Spanish word to say parking, Puerto Rican say, oh, no, we put parking, no, we put parking. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say that even like for a fully bilingual um, Puerto Rican, um, like myself, I, I use... Um, 
filler words in Spanish when I'm speaking English and filler words in English when I'm speaking Spanish. So you can see that example of just switching those codes so easy that it's just like natural almost. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have a little activity for this lesson. Um, you're welcome to pause the screen and um, download the handout, which will be linked below. And then you can also make it in the notebook. It's pretty easy. Uh, you will be using um, these words that have different meanings, like boricua. Um, there's phrases too, like el que no tiene dinga tiene mandinga. And then you'll be using those colloquialisms to create a little comic strip um, in, the sp in the squares provided below. So yeah, just feel free to have some fun with this. Um, design your own <laughs> little story about it. Um, there's also, like, if you look up any of these words on Google, if you need more examples, um, there's definitely uh, resources out there that will explain it a little better. But just so you have a little more um, context, um, Boricua, like we were saying before, is uh, a person of Puerto Rican descent. So, El que no tiene dinga, tiene mandinga, is used to express, express like, oh, someone that doesn't have this might have the other thing. So, you know, I got it as like something crazy. Um, chavos can mean money. Uh, it also has different meanings in different places of Latin America. So in Puerto Rico, it's used as money. Um, huepa, huepa is a phrase that all Puerto Ricans use to express excitement, joy. Um, you got an A in your test, Wepa! Congratulations. <laughs> and then Corillo is a group of friends, like your homies. And then hangar is to hang out. It's actually an English word that has been converted to Spanish. So can you hear it like hang out, hang out? <laughs> Pretty fun. Um, and then this is a short video of Gina Rodriguez and Ismael Cruz that will be also linked below, um, where they teach you a little bit of Puerto Rican slang. They go through some words, they laugh, they share some context. Um, and it's just pretty funny to hear. Uh, I think you guys should check it out. Yeah, I, I learned a, a few phrases from there. <laughs> you have a favorite? Um, I really like brutal or, or yeah. identico. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So some great words there too. Feel free to use them in your handout as well. Uh, if a word really sticks, incorporate them to your vocabulary. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then do you want to intro the Rodriguez de Tio? Sure. Uh, so, Lola Rodriguez de Tia, she was Puerto Rico's premier 19th century lyric poet, and she was one of Latin America's most important early feminists. Um, so, she was born in San Germán, where she received her primary education, uh, and she was the daughter of Don Sebastian Rodriguez de Astudio, um, who was the dean of the magistracy of Puerto Rico. Um, so he was very high in the <laughs> rankings, um, very like uh, well-regarded uh, Spaniard. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Doña Carmen Ponce de Leon, uh, a descendant of Ponce de Leon, the explorer and first governor of the colony. So she too was also like high up there. So the, their position in society was rather like amongst the elite. So she was able to get that primary education through that. Um, but she had like, her education was through religious schools and by private tutors uh, as guided by her mother, um, who was described in the Encyclopedia Puerto Ricana Illustrada uh, as an educated, well-read woman with a fine spirit and the wide awake intelligence of a child. Uh, yeah. So it was really rare for women to be educated in Puerto Rico. 
since most women were especially like especially um, poor women we were Ill illiterate so it was very rare for a woman to even be considered an intellectual so for Lola um she was more than an intellectual she was super encouraged and um she was just this piece this person of just magical words um and her, she was very much understanding of the disparity of opportunity in the island for women. Um, so she became a very much uh, influential early feminist for Latin America itself. So very, very prominent figure. Um, so we have a little activity as well here. You're going to listen to Radio de Luna by Lola Rodriguez de Tio, which is one of her poems. Um, and then you're going to draw in a piece of paper some imagery that comes to mind to, in response to the poem. So I'm going to read it in Spanish and then Hannah's going to read it in English. So you get this space um, and just the feel of it in both languages. <clears throat> rayo de luna, blanco rayo de luna, desciende ya, ilumina las horas de tristeza que oscurecen mi vida. Desciende en la onda clara de tu lumbre tranquila y québrate en mi seno, donde el dolor se abriga. Mis húmedas miradas en ti solo se fijan y un misterioso anhelo consume el alma mía. El fulgor de tu lumbre, de la mente indecisa, visiones vi vigorosas, se alzan y me acarician, y con helados besos, con lánguida sonrisa, de mis sueños me hablan y luego se disipan. Blanco rayo de luna desciende ya, ilumina la noche de los tristes que por amor suspiran. That was beautiful, Daniel. Um, now for the English version. <laughs> White streak of moon, descend now. Illuminate the hours of sorrow that darken my life. Descend in the clear wave of your peaceful blaze and shatter yourself in my bosom where the pain is harbored. My damp gazes are fixed only in you and a mysterious longing consumes my soul. To the glimmer of your blaze, from the indecisive mind, leisurely visions extend themselves and caress me. And with your icy kisses, with a languid smile, they speak to me of my dreams and soon dissipate themselves. White streak of moon, descend now. Illuminate the night of the sad people that for love grieve. So sad. Nostalgic. Beautiful. <laughs> so what did you draw? Make sure to submit some pictures. Um, I don't know if you can post pictures on comments below, but that'd be pretty cool. We'd love to see what you came up with. Um, yeah, what, what your response to this poem was, was it, yeah. there's a lot in there. Mm -hmm. Feel free to write a comment even. And then that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Next class, we'll be talking about the nature and endemic wildlife of the island. So we'll be learning about all the greenery that's going around and maybe get a little um political with climate change and and some other little little things in there it'll be definitely very entertaining and um just cool to learn about class so we'll see you there <laughs> see you there thank you bye everybody